from this apparently inhospitable terrain, let me welcome you to Djibouti. Djibouti, I hear you say. Djibouti. It is the smallest country on mainland Africa. It is squeezed between Ethiopia, Eritrea and Somalia. And its small size belies the fact that there's quite a lot of interesting things to see. But not for the unadventurous. Let me take you on a tour of Djibouti. Hi, and welcome to Djibouti. Not just Djibouti, Route National 5, Djibouti. That's right, this is a national highway. And this is one of the good bits. I've spent the last couple of hours going along at about 10 or 15 kilometers an hour in low range gear, actually make that five or 10, because this is Djibouti. Now, let me tell you some more about this country. When I get off Route National 5 and find a road with some bitumen. I found the bitumen, but it's not great. What may at first look like a pleasant white sandy beach with azure waters is actually a salt lake. But it's not just a salt lake, this is Lake Asal in Djibouti. It's in a volcanic crater surrounded by old lava flows and it is 155 metres below sea level, making it both the lowest place in Africa and the second lowest place in the world after only the Dead Sea. It's part of the broader Danakil Depression, which extends and is mainly in Ethiopia, but this is the lowest point in Djibouti. Astonishing vision in this part of Djibouti, where you see the ancient lava flows meeting the sanded plains, coming up towards the Gulf of Aden coast, the steep slopes, and all of this volcanic rock everywhere, which at one point was ejected miles into the air and then flooded down as wet magma. The barren salt lake landscape is certainly made more imposing by all of these lava flows, cold lava flows, hundreds of thousands, millions of years old, who knows, I don't, that have just frozen here, giving a hint of the aggression of nature over history. I've been to a lot of places, but it's hard to uh, get worse than the poverty here. this little inhospitable piece of desert and you're wondering why I'm driving down it in the middle of nowhere where clearly not many people go. Well, the stones here are a bit of a giveaway as is this bridge. This is Route National Six, National Road 6 in Djibouti. This uh, cool looking stream comes straight from the volcano. All the underground reservoirs. This is as close to boiling as it gets without boiling. It's, it's steamy. And this inhospitable terrain is called Lake Abe. And Lake Abe crosses Ethiopia and Djibouti and is one of the most inhospitable parts of the world. And in fact, has the highest average temperature in the world, averaging 31.5 degrees throughout the entire year, day and night. It's an incredible terrain here. The brown exterior of these chimneys hides the interior of the calcium and the calcium powder that, uh, that makes them. This is an incredible landscape, I tell you. You can see the marks on the hills here that the lake sometimes can fill. I don't know how often or how long it's been since the last one, but certainly long enough to leave the tracks of Route National Number 9. He's saying it's Abdu. He's been my um, guide around Lake Abe today, and this is one of the places where he and his family live. 
so the mats that they weave just protect them from the rain. Sleep here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. For the uh, husband and the wife and two children. So this is downtown Djibouti and it's a little bit quiet at the moment because it's two in the afternoon and it's very hot. So what do I think about Djibouti? Well, the current president of Djibouti is the second president since independence. He took over from his uncle. Let's just say there's not an active civil society here. But it's a very interesting geostrategic place at the moment too. There are army bases here that include soldiers from France, US, Germany, Japan, China, in different army bases of course. The Djiboutians recently reneged on a port deal with the United Arab Emirates, so the UAE is building a port and free zone next door in Somaliland as a bit of a revenge. So why is so much happening here? Take a look at the map again. See where Djibouti and Somaliland for that matter are, right at the end of the Gulf of Aden. And what's at the top of the Gulf of Aden? Suez Canal. So one family can rule this country with not much civil society and get away with it because geostrategically everyone wants to be their friend right now.